It's been 40 years since Burt Reynolds starred in Smokey and the Bandit, the second highest grossing film of 1977. The highest was Star Wars with Han Solo and his beloved Millennium Falcon, but just as much love between Man and Machine was shown between Bandit and his Trans Am. You couldn't walk out of Star Wars and buy a Millennium Falcon, but you could walk out of Smokey and the Bandit and buy this. This is a 1978 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am. This and the same body Camaro were the last survivors of the muscle car era. By the late 1970s, the Mustang had morphed into a horrible economy car, but the Challenger name had a worse fate, worn on a rebadged four-cylinder Mitsubishi. General Motors was determined to keep the torch alive for as long as they could. They saved the muscle car not through any kind of innovation, but by making it the loudest, craziest cartoon character version of a muscle car you could think of. 40 years later, does the screaming chicken have enough bark to make up for its lack of bite? I think so. By 1978, the engine in the screaming chicken was choking on US emission regulations, putting out only 220 horsepower. Now, this car moves really well, but I suspect it has something to do with the gearing because the motor is just screaming at highway speeds. It also has the aerodynamics of a brick. At 70 miles an hour right now, it feels like I'm going 170 miles an hour. And the quality was typical of this era with really poor fit and finish. But none of this really matters. The goal was not to make this a quality car or a fast car or a quiet, comfortable cruiser. Rather, this was supposed to be the loudest car possible, both audibly and visually. The focal point of this stickered up body is the hood, with this giant screaming chicken surrounding the Ram Air intake. An intake that was totally 100% fake. In addition to the screaming chicken on the hood, you have 10 more throughout the car. I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight, chicken tonight. The designers of the Trans Am were screaming chicken crazy, making the car impossible to mistake for anything else. Adding to its racing look credentials is a NASCAR style rear spoiler, engine turned instrument binnacle, and a racy looking gauge pack. You also get a trim piece around the shift lever that looks kind of like a flattened disco ball. And then there's the famous Trans Am signature T-tops, which are also famous for something that Trans Am owners know very, very well. Welcome to our car wash. To get started, select your wash by pressing one of the service button buttons. Oh God. Oh. So unless you want to look like someone with bladder problems, you might want to stick to hand washing. The nice thing about a lower performance car with all of this flash and noise is it's really fun to drive at legal speeds. To get this kind of noise and fun out of a modern muscle car, it will try and kill you. As my boss Doug perfectly demonstrated with a Hellcat, as well as countless other people. There you go. Shit. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I think the craziest part of these Trans Am is how undervalued they are. You can find a nice driver in the teens and low twenties, and a really nice car in the upper twenties and low thirties. To get other famous movie muscle cars like a Bullet 68 Mustang Fastback, you'll have to pay double that, while a Vanishing Point style 1970 Challenger can go for six figures. And it's not like those cars perform that much better, or this Trans Am is any less fun to drive. If I were shopping for an old muscle car, you better believe I, I feel, feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight, chicken tonight. Like chicken tonight. Chicken tonight. <laughs>